Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we are doing Yilmer, the tree of laser beams. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, Yilmer is also a little bit thorny, uh, a little rough around the edges, basically hard to give a hug to. So uh, the, the, it's, the tree is, uh, is a thing. Tree is the, the first boss and is basically the gatekeeper. Uh, you must go through the tree to finish a run, and this is the fight you're going to see the most and possibly die to the most of all the bosses because uh, just by simple virtue of being the Act 1 boss and, to be fair, a bit harder than some of the other bosses most of the time. So what I got here is I have a Madness 14 version. I do have Despair and Overcharge Monsters on, so we'll be talking about that. Uh, we'll take a look at first at the cards, then we'll talk. then we'll go through how I'd Kind of construct my combat and kind of watch play through the first few turns uh see how things go in the turn order of the cards and how they interact with each other maybe some comments from me on how to get past each of them uh and then there's something else i was going to talk about and last off maybe some the boss options because when you start a fight for all the bosses there's different uh choices you have when you start the fight so uh yeah let's uh let's start with cards before we get there though a big thanks to those that are supporting the channel best ways to support it is either direct tips or really feedback and criticisms uh you know positive reinforcement is always plus normal human things uh people like to be heard that their uh, their effort is uh is worth something and is being appreciated so if you got any of that please pass it my way and i will continue to uh, make these guides so i have round six here and magnus is the sole survivor because i just wanted to show all the cards because you can't really access these cards outside of seeing a monster play them. So I just survived six turns and now I'm going to show you all the cards. Now these are ordered backwards. These are the most recent cards you cast and these are the first ones. I am on playing Despair. So there are four cards a turn for the tree. I'm pretty sure it's tied to Despair. It might be to one of the base difficulties that make the tree go from three cards to four. But basically the tree will play an additional card each turn. So it's up to four. And the the order of spells is the same. You just add a couple cards in. So things will still line up on the same turns. So no matter the difficulty, when I say the laser beam is on turn three, it's going to be turn three, regardless of your difficulty. Uh, the, some of these cards are coded in to happen on specific turns. The rest of them are random and are fillers based on your difficulty, whether they exist or not. So when we look at this, we have to look at them in chunks of four. So on turn one, uh, we got a bunch of buffs. We put Reinforce up right away. Remember, these are affected by... Uh, oh, can I click on it here? Yes, I can click on it here. By Overcharged Monsters. So everything we see on this screen is plus one. So this is actually two Reinforce. So two out of the three turns, maybe three out of three, depending on the, the way he casts, Yilmer will have Reinforce up, which is why it's, it's kind of hard to take this fight as a physical DPS. Uh... Also, there's he summons creatures in front of him and the trunkies are hard to hit. They're also trees. They're immune to bleed. So in general, if you're struggling to do this fight, it might be because you're sticking with a physical DPS team. We can talk more about that later as we go through the, the, the fight. But uh, we got reinforced right away. And then we got this regrowth. This is the uh, this is the big scary boogeyman most of the time for a lot of players. Uh, this is an enchantment that is placed on your team. It says all heroes here. And we'll talk more in detail as we see it, but this is a, uh, the more you play, the worse it gets. This is basically adding the thorn corruption to this fight without having picked the corruptor or the corruptor rewards. So, yay. Uh, but it only happens one out of three turns. It's just the turn order really makes a difference. So those, that's the biggest thing on turn one is we get the bark skin and we get the, uh, the enchantment on us. Turn two, uh, for despair, we also have another enchantment. This one's on the tree. It says, hey, when you hit the tree, you take thorn damage and you're shackled. The shackling is the biggest thing from this one, in my opinion, that you got to worry about. You got to be very careful with speed manipulation in this fight, partially because of the tree, partially because of the dryad that he has with him. And then, of course, the tree, all these turns, is buffing himself with five powerful because that is dangerous. So this is turn one up to here, and then turn two is to here. I wish I could draw. I can't draw. Um, so the tree is always giving himself powerful. And then turn three, this is the big dangerous you're going to die turn because what happens is moonbeam comes out it says hit all your enemy heroes hit them three times every time you're hitting them you're adding more buff i mean more debuffs on them that increases the damage of the next strike so the first moonbeam is not nearly as powerful as the third moonbeam and it does all three in the same in a in a row like you know what i mean like all three volleys the third volley hurts the most um uh, there's also something of note here the turn after the 
thorn proliferation, the tree will dispel all of its thorns to do uh, damage to your enemy, your team based on how many thorns it has. So there's a two part thing here I want to talk about. One is the the more thorns you play, the more damage you're going to take the next turn. But also, if for some reason with turn manipulation, you somehow screw up and one of your characters doesn't take a turn between the tree casting regrowth and doing rain of thorns, any any uh, thorns you put on the, the boss at that point will stay in effect for three rounds, which is really dangerous. Like, normally this regrowth is okay because anything you add to the tree, it'll just purge off itself right away. But that might not be the case if turn order gets messed up and the tree gets to take two turns in a row between turns one and two. Turns two and three is what you often you'll see the turn take two turns in a row because of the dryad. And that with turn three being the danger zone is uh, is why a lot of people die, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't have enough data. I know that turn three is a scary turn for most bosses and that is no exception with Yelmer here. It is the moonbeam. And then um, if you look here, I have 23 cards instead of 24. That's because on turn four, after the moonbeam turn, the tree will summon new adds. Uh, unless it, of course, already has a full set of ads, in which case it won't it won't cast that card. So the tree's been holding on to this summon more treants card, but I haven't killed off his ads, so that hasn't happened. But then it's just cycling through the same cards again. Um, and of note, on turn two and turn four, I'm not sure if those are hard coded. I'm pretty sure two it's hard coded in that the dispel happens. This has recently been nerfed down from three on despair, which is a big deal. Uh, dispel two, we'll talk about that later. And that happens on turn four as well. So, yes. Big turns are the thorn proliferation and then the dispel of it on turn two and the moonbeam on turn three. And then also the dispel on two and four. And I think it does a six. Every two turns is a is a dispel. All right. So enough blah, blah, blah. More do, do, do. Uh, let's reset this fight. Ba -ba -ba. This is just uh, one of the saves I had lying around where I remembered to save before the tree. So nothing special about this team other than the fact that it can go the distance. Um, so I'm going to show you my normal play pattern is, you know, you always cast Wolf and Intimidate on your kill target. But uh, I've already made a mistake. And uh, if you catch it, great on you. If not, uh, that's fine, because I'm going to point it out to you. The fact is uh, this tree dispels two on turn two. And it only has two debuffs and debuffs are placed in the order you apply them. So on turn two, no matter how many buffs this tree has, it'll remove all stacks of slow and vulnerable. So what I want to do, if I plan on DPSing the tree in the first two turns, is I actually want to make sure that my vulnerable stays alive. And for my vulnerable to stay alive, I have to apply Intimidate first, and then Captain Sound. This also, by the way, this, this is the fix because uh, vulnerable is now number three. It's also technically not the fix, and we can tell how later. Uh, I guess I guess I'll just tell you now. It's because if I don't apply a second mark, this mark will fall off, and vulnerable will still be the second in line. But this does illustrate the the idea of making sure you have to apply debuffs in the correct order on monsters that dispel, so that the correct debuffs don't get dispelled. Like, yes, mark's great, and sights does nothing for my team. So these two I'd much rather removed than this vulnerable. So. The order that you apply things does matter. And we can just stick with this for now. Um, next up is Reinforce. So of the boss's moves, if you remember on turn two, it will purge all of its thorns and throw them at me. So I want Reinforce to survive that turn because that's going to be the most damage I take on turns one and two is Reinforce. This also really helps with the thorns that the tree applies to himself. So if you can only apply Reinforce to one person on your team, put it on your damage dealer. Honestly, the reason that this Reggie has a heavy belt is for the reinforce. Like this Reginald as my damage dealer, I want it to not take damage from thorns or at least not as much. So reinforce is my answer to that. All right, so I think I'm blabbing it. I mean, there's just, there's a lot to say. Okay, of the ads, I forgot to do this, dang it. So I was gonna look at the cards for the Dryad and the Stumpy, the, the Trunky here. The Dryad, she has a lot of dispels. Uh, team speed ups, team powerful, and starfall. Starfall hurts you a lot. It is not nearly as deadly as the speed ups and the dispels. Uh, so that is why the dryad usually has to die first, because you don't want this tree to be dispelled every turn and to be fast every turn and to be powerful every turn. 
because that will just make your life miserable. And then what Trunky does, Trunky throws a couple debuffs around your team. Mainly, it's the Shackle that hurts the most. He has a card that will do a Shackle that'll hit me once and then bounce to another target. And that's where the whole turn order things comes into play, is if uh, I go first and then they take a turn and then they Shackle my whole team, they take another turn in a row before I take a turn. So them taking two turns in a row can be very deadly. If it's one and two, then they're going to have infinite thorns on the tree. If it's two and three, they're going to be able to laser beam me without any defenses up. Yes, enough babble, more doing. More doing! Cool, I don't care about any of that. Do, 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 do. I, also, I'm playing a Madness 14, so I have the ability to make a very consistent deck, in my opinion. So, don't be afraid if... Uh, if I sh am able to kill targets off faster than you, I will I will pull my punches to a certain point to show us everything. But uh, this you are looking for a refined enough deck to kill off the Dryad turn one. Uh, if you can't do that, then try to... Uh, that is one avenue to improve this fight for you. Because, I mean, Reginald, I've got him all the pretty toys. He's got some Bless already. He's got some Powerful already. He's got cards and energy, like... It's going to be a good ready turn. Small thing, fanaticism. If fanaticism is going to hurt yourself, put a little courage on yourself first. We'll talk about courage here in a bit for the laser beam. But, uh... Doot, 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 doot. You should also draw cards before you play cards, but I'm talking and making a video, so I am not the most efficient of card players during that. I guess we've got to talk about courage now. So, I've got this courage that says last for four rounds. And I know the tree does a laser beam on round three. That laser beam can't point here on the screen because my mouse has to hover someone, does fire damage and holy damage. So to survive turn three, a really good thing to do is have courage and insulate. So since these are stacked until four, I should be able to apply them all to my team now, and they will last until the laser beam turn. And then who do I think is going to take damage? I don't think it really matters. Let's give it to the self burn guy. I should probably give it to the self harm guy here in the back. There's no Thors to worry about yet, but that is one thing. Like, if you have extra block or shields, throw it to the person doing the damage because they will thorn themselves to death. Uh, normal Reggie things, if you want to see that, look elsewhere. But, I mean, as I said, this is a very efficient team, and Reggie can nuke the mess out of them. I will not kill the, um, like, because this can kill the two adds. I will pull my punch a little bit, and we'll let the, uh, we'll let the Trunky live. But, uh... I'm not going to show you much what the Dryad does because then I won't be able to show you the rest of the fight because she just messes it up oh so much. And I could, but honestly, you should not suffer a Dryad to live. Okay, so now we've got this debuff that says whenever I play a card, apply a thorn and regen to the highest HP monster. Usually that's the tree. So anytime I play any of these cards, bad things happen and the tree gets more thorns and more regen. The thorns he should dispel on his own because I haven't screwed up the thing. And like, see, see vulnerable is the second debuff here. So these are gonna be the two going the way of the, like they're just gonna disappear. And I have no way, like even if I play intimidate, it's too late. This market went to the back of the line. Vulnerable will disappear. Uh, Trunky hasn't taken his shackle turn yet. So we'll let him do that. So the idea is you wanna pass on everything because every time you play a card, you're basically dealing two damage from his next the the next card the tree does he's going to throw his thorns at us so every time i play a card my team's taking damage and it's making it harder for my dps to deal damage on any turn that the thorns is up so honestly the less the better i will play this prismatic field so that the insulate unfortunately the math doesn't work out the insulate's going to stick around um until the end of turn three for all of my heroes but at least some of them will have it for the laser beam turn and if I were to kill something next, I'd probably be killing Trunky just so that he does not uh, shackle me. But it is what it is. I need to put a little more courage up. Bam, some courage. Everyone should have courage by round three. Remember, it's round three when the tree takes his turn, not round three when I take my turn. So, And then Dispel, I want to get the Vulnerable off as much as possible so that I can survive tree things. You can also knock this regrowth off with multiple enchantments. Uh, you're not likely to have three enchantments to do that, because if I played one more enchantment, this regrowth would go away. But uh, that is an option. As it is, I've played too many cards. This is this is more cards than I usually play. 
Um, and I'd want to save all my card usage just for Reggie's turn to go nuking, kill down the tree on turn one. But since we are pulling my punches, um, I had a little extra to spare. All right, then here's where the Trunky does his... Oh, thought he was done with Shack. Maybe I missed it. Maybe Shackle's turn three. Okay, so he dispelled all of his thorns. He also dispelled all the vulnerable. So now this is your main turn to try to deal damage to him. But on that turn, he also put up this enchantment that says, hey, if you damage me, you shall be shackled. So you got to be careful who you put this on. Put it on someone that has a ability to dispel it or can be dispelled before their next turn. Ideally, someone that can hit him twice. So in this build, I don't think I have anyone that can do that. Usually one of my supports will just hit it twice. And you got to be able to take the damage because it is doing 15 damage to me uh, straight up. So preferably someone with block or reinforce takes that hit. I no longer have the enchantment, so I can cast cards to my heart content. Yes, I can be doing more attacks. I'm just trying to let this Trunky live. Um, rain. This is great for turns after the Laser Beam of Death happens. Uh, I could do it now, just clear burn off of uh, Cornelius, but I think a Dispel is coming up for Otis. No, nope. it's fine. Do I have another rain here? I don't have another range, so I'm going to save this range for after the tree turn. I might accidentally kill Trunky. I don't want to kill Trunky. Whoops. Dang it. Oh, I should have, I should have, I should have rained. I could have saved the monster. It's fine. It's fine. Just remember that, uh, I think it's a, it's random between turn two and turn three, uh, for that. He'll do an AOE shackle. He'll shackle two or three people at once, and it's just a big deal. Um, and remember, because I had Cornelius hit the tree twice, Cornelius ate up both these shackle shots. That's why I wanted him to do two attacks. Uh, so that now Reginald is free and clear and will not be shackled. And I have a dispel target for... I have a good person to heal up with Otis right now. So, Courage. Everyone has Courage except for Magnus. This is round three, so the tree will go. So we're fine on Courage. Uh, clarity, let's just give uh, the man some more resources. This is laser beam turn, so if I wanted to be super careful, I'd look at everyone's resistances. Magnus is 50 of both fire and holy. We're pretty good here on fire and holy. Holy, great, fire not so much. Really great here. So it's actually Magnus and Otis that are going to take the most damage from the laser beam, but according to this, is low. So between the two of them, I will spend all of my resources. I will not fanaticism because I do not want to be vulnerable on the laser beam turn. Sheep. Sheep would have screwed up my math anyway. This is why I don't play with sheep. Um, let's pump a little bit of damage into the tree this turn just for my sanity's sake, not for video's sake, I guess. I don't want vulnerable on the tree killing turn, except I could dispel it. I cannot dispel deep enough, so I need to dispel... Cornelius so that he survives the laser beam of death. I want to kill off some things. And the more efficient your decks get, the more you'll be able to handle this damage. But remember, he's got reinforce. The fire is one of his weakest resistances. I also meant to, I'll reload the fight here at the end and we'll talk about his resistances. But as you can see with, yes, he's got a lot of burn stacks on him, but Fire is his, his weakest base resistance anyway, so. Laser Beam! But buffs himself, makes it so I can't cast cards. Does a little bit of random damage, and then... But you can see, since I had Insulate and Courage, everyone was rocking, you know, 50 plus resistances, so I'm taking half damage. And I also had a little bit of block and shield going on, so it was not a problem. If I didn't have that, like... I almost want to just reload and show you how deadly the laser beam is without the buffs. Uh, and then I just got to power through the thorns turn, but every time I play a card, he gets thorns. So every card has to be doing something super effective. Like that one applied full vulnerable and did not like it took away as many thorns as I added. So that's fine. Nothing else here is really worth it except for maybe the healthy hand to get rid of a shackle. But I'm not going to play these other two because they're just giving more thorns to him this turn and more damage to him next turn. Rain to clear all the fire stacks. Uh, I also got rid of his fire stacks, but honestly, I don't care. 
Uh, I should have searing touch first if I was doing that. Uh, and this, remember, every time you're attacking on this turn, I'm adding thorns and I'm taking away thorns. So I'm really just, it's just free damage he's doing to me. And he still has a turn to act. So he's going to hit me, hit my whole team. So the more I do this, the more likely Cornelius is going to die. So Cornelius doesn't actually want to do any more attacks. Anyway. Uh, this is a super efficient card, so play it. This is a fairly efficient card in the fact that it gives Sanctify to a Thorns turn. Uh, and I have lots of block on Otis, so it's okay to spend an attack. Nothing worth Dispelling, and nothing worth... Well, maybe the maybe the Sanctifies. Get rid of some Sanctify on my guys. But every time I'm doing this, I'm just... One, one more card! I just want to play one more card! Because now I'm up in the 10s and like, you don't want to be in the 20s or 30s with thorns. That's, that just gets deadly. I no longer have reinforce, so I'm taking thorns damage at full value. But as you can see, I'm almost in lethal. I mean, I am in lethal range, but uh, let's show you the summons turn. So he's dispelling himself some more. He's throwing off all his thorns at me, summoning some ads and getting stronger. And then he'll just go through the same thing. Every two turns is a dispel. Every three turns is a laser beam. Uh, every three turns is the thorn enchantment. And every three turns is the thorn rain. So as long as you're not letting him take two turns in a row, the whole thorn rain thing shouldn't be that, pardon me, that much of a problem. Um, and then if I want to finish him off, he doesn't have thorns, so the reinforce isn't his issue, but I can cast all my cards again. So I just want to do as much damage as I can. Ooh, the tree. I'm going to finish it off because I don't like leaving it unfinished. And I'm just like that. Powerful. Fireballs. Oh, no. Little trunkies are basically just... I, I don't know if these ones have shackle. Everything these little trunkies do, the big ones do. And last but not least, die, tree! Woo! Um, I would do that, but then that would delete my save. So let us restart and look at his resistances. And then we will go to the other save and look at some other things. So his resistances, see, base fire is zero. Everything else is actually fairly high. This is without... This is without reinforced. Look at this. We're in the 40s and 50s. This, this is why if you're having trouble with the tree, it might just be because you're bringing physical damage to the team. He has reinforced and he has high base resistances. So honestly, the team I'm running now, I didn't realize it. I forgot about this. I was just picking random teams. Um, this is the one best suited to the tree because fire and holy resistances are his weakest. Next up is going to be uh, probably lightning. And of course, cold and shadow are in a good place just overall. But uh, turns out trees are weak to fire. Go figure. Uh, next up, let's look at, I was going to say, the options for the encounter. So with the tree fight, there are a bunch of options down here. It'll tell you how many are hidden. Uh, in this case, the ones that are hidden is uh, Bree can be one of my characters. Uh, she will have an option to interact with the tree. Uh, the... Elder Dryad down here, there's a fight for a Moonstone. If you have the Moonstone item, that'll give you some more options here. Uh, and then last but not least is one that involves a, a specific quest line and achievement. If you get the achievement Dishonorable, uh, you will then have a third option at the tree. I'm pretty sure that's the one. I've actually not done that one, so I'm just going off of secondhand knowledge on that. But uh, those should be the three options you're missing here when you do the tree fight. Uh, other than that, and I don't want to give you spoilers exactly what they do, uh, other than that, these basic ones, this one will give you a speed buff. This one you have a chance to heal, and if you heal critically, you will get a, uh, a vitality buff and a speed buff. And then this one, uh, you start with stealth. But as you can see, I have a 0% chance that and a 97% chance of this one. All right, I'm trying to think of what I missed. I feel like there's one more category of something I want. See, critical success, success, optimal commission, I have vitality and fast for my starting round. Uh, kill Dryad first. I guess uh, let's just see what uh, see how fast Laser Beam can kill me. Oh, this team's not as sturdy as the other team. Maybe I should have cast some cards. 
And if you do absolutely nothing, the Dryad stacks a lot of regen, a lot of powerful. The Trunky does a little bit of physical damage to you. Starfires, the difference between Moonfall and Starfall is completely random. Uh, there's no way to manipulate or predict when she's going to have a Starfall, as far as I know. Starfalls are, of course, much worse because they say jump seven. I mean, seven attacks, where Moonfire says one attack. Hmm, go figure. Seven is worse. Oh, and by the way, jump. Jump is the one that says it increases in damage with jumps. So, yeah, that's why Maluka's about to die. All right, Maluka, take, take a little bit of love for yourself. Let's see if you can get to the, uh, go to the next turn. And you see the Dryad. Yep. Let's give the Dryad one more turn and see what she does. See, and suddenly the Dryad is ahead of my team. And they basically, other than Evelyn, because I did, I got rid of the, the slow on her or whatever, right? Uh, the rest of my team is going slow enough that I, the enemy could start taking two turns in a row. So you got to be careful of, of that. I've, I've said that at least three times. I think that's funny enough. Laser beam. Ready for it? Here it comes. You shall now burn. Mm. See, Magnus was at like 80% health before that laser beam of death. And now he is down to absolutely nothing. The only reason Eve's surviving so well is because she has insulate. Because she gets that from her passive. She has insulate every turn. So that should help you decide why, you know, she was kind of low before that laser beam. But she survived where these other two didn't. And it's really just 100% this insulate buff. And Magnus didn't have it, almost died. It's, uh, it's a thing of beauty. All right, I think that's enough. I feel like I'm missing something, but uh, hopefully it was helpful. Please let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. I plan on doing maybe more of these in the future. I did originally have a set of all the bosses before. Some of them were tied to longer videos, some shorter videos. Uh, I am kind of looking for a format for these boss fights. Uh, there are like uh, about 14 bosses in the game. Well, actually, the new zone, 20 bosses in the game. Uh, so I plan on doing all these. The more input you give me now, the better these videos will be in the future, and I might come back and redo this tree fight uh, if the format changes enough. Anyway, uh, I will catch you later. Peace.